Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one, Taking Stock, written by Hypothetical Shugoth. Sir, I'm going to have to cut you off. The presumably sapient creature somehow slithered up the bar seat to bring its vocalization orifice and sensory cluster to bear on the barkeep's general direction, and ground out the litany that was either heavily accented, gull standard, or the result of the evening's consumption causing internal damage to synthetic plumbing. At this point, the bartender was willing to bet either way. A fair point, this customer, but you've reached the absolute limit of the credit you pre-purchased for the evening, according to the price shift. More plumbing issues, goggling, grinding, but clearly interrogative. Several rounds on the house at peak capacity hours, most of our top shelf imbibables for various biochemistries, our entire bottom shelf, half of our stock of cleaning supplies, the tears of several entities who fell before you in drinking contests, and another you bullied into submission with the least of your manipulated digits. The flask of engine cleaner, a ship's mechanic brought in, two flasks of engine coolant, a full ewer of something the prior owner referred to as quantum liquid condensate. Interrogative grumble. Yes, really, and our entire stock of garnish produce, and the garnish invertebrates, sir. You said you liked how crunchy they are. The entity paused, face puckering, then nodded. Please, smug plumbing noises. About the only thing that's been put in front of you was that one Terran intoxicant we received on consignment and haven't been able to use for more than thermal mass in our coolers. That refused it, even when you had to go best of three in getting anything else into your consumption orifice. The creature seemed to become more lucid at the mention of the substance, blurting out something that sounded somewhat like a psh in haughty, high, gull standard. Given the creature should either be dead, combusting, or scattered across five dimensions and eight more hypothetical ones due to what it consumed over the course of the day, the lucidity had been an apparent coincidence. So yes, you are cut off. The only reason you're still in here at all is because I don't know whether to call you a taxi, a peace officer, an ambulance, or an exorcist. Any suggestions? Not a drink. Oh, by the stars, that was practically coherent. <laughs> Holy water got with right deterrent it is. Uh, fine. The creature staggered to its feet, rifling through its pockets, getting lost repeatedly, and pulled out a generous but not exorbitant credgity, confirming the intent to transfer with more dexterity than it had been showing earlier. Whatever the creature was, it seemed possessed of an uncommonly robust constitution. The bartender hoped it would make it to the clinic or its lodgings before exploding or otherwise expiring. Before you leave, I have to ask, what kicked this off? Loss. An attempt to kill yourself. The creature paused, wavering at the door to the bar, a manic gleeful expression flooding out across its face, and it pulled out a specimen flask. Light played across the container for a brief moment, and a singularity was plainly visible inside, caught and held by an unfathomable forces that keep such jars contents absolutely secure. All that for a black hole, I mean, sure. They have a fair amount of energy, but... The bartender broke off. The corona around the minuscule object wasn't right for that. No, 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 no. It's a wormhole. Was drinking to success. Am going home to terror. The creature pointed with an absolute certainty off into space. Enlightenment all on the bartender. Terror. The stuff of cheap action movies and cheaper trade goods that people still bought from some reason. Human space was two arms away. And even with the best rifters at the helm, such a journey would take over a decade. A shortcut home would be a treasure, indeed. Safe journeys then, friend, and maybe we'll be seeing more of your kind here. If you've got that worked out, a stable wormhole between the arms would indeed be a treasure beyond reckoning. Many governments and trade organizations would give considerable limbs, auxiliary offspring, or, if forced, credits to possess or even have access to such a thing. Goodbye, I, I'll be back. 
The man toddled off out the bar, leaving the bartender thoughtfully cleaning. If more of his kind were going to be turning up and drinking like that, the profits were going to be spiking. But the cellar would need to be expanded to become a full warehouse. Much to do. Much to do. End of chapter. Story number two. A Captain's Duty. Written by a guy called C. All hands abandon ship. I want you in an escape pod and off this boat in five minutes, Captain Booker of the Peregrine shouted over the intercom. It hurt to give the order. He had been flying for 43 years, and when he had purchased the Peregrine eight years ago and turned her into a faster freighter in the 10 sector radius, he never would have thought that he would lose her. The Shikar ship had pulled them from wharf, dwarfed the Peregrine easily 10 times her size and had them hopelessly outgunned. A ship built for war targeting a freighter that was harmless in comparison. Booker had lost nearly half of his crew in the warship opening salvos targeting the Peregrine's meager weapon systems when several decks were opened to vacuum. He had lost another third when the secondary reactor was breached and went critical. With life support barely keeping atmosphere in the uncompromised corridors, he wasn't even sure if the handful of crew that he had given the orders to evacuate had even received it. But he would do everything in his power to buy them time to get off his ship. He would do his duty. Pushing the primary reactor past any parameters that could be considered safe, he fed all the power he could to the forward particle shield and the engines to continue maneuvering, making the ship a more difficult target to hit. While peppering the Shakar shields uselessly, with the ship's only remaining accelerator cannon turret. He knew his efforts were incompletely in vain. The Peregrine was already in her death throes, but his crew needed every second they could get. After what felt like an eternity of dodging fire and futilely returning it, the intercom crackled to life. Cap! Uh, it's Wilkins! Uh, I've reached the uh, uh, escape pod. Uh, everyone else uh, already and ejected. Make your way... Pod and... Ah, oh, feck out of here. Booker let out a sigh of relief. He had managed to save at least some of his crew. He could take solace in that at least. He opened the drawer under his console and pulled out a bottle of scotch that he'd bought with his first pay he had earned flying. It would seem his retirement would be short-lived indeed, and it would be a sin to let the 40-year-age scotch go to waste. He opened the scotch, took a long draw from the bottle, and lamented that he wouldn't be able to share it with his friends. Corking the bottle and returning the empty bottle to its drawer, he quickly and clumsily donned one of the bridge's vac suits. He powered down the peregrine's life support. He was alone and needed the power the system drew. He powered off all the ship's lighting. He needed the power. He strapped into his crash couch and powered off the grav generator. He needed the power. He dropped the particle shield. They had stopped firing, and he needed the power. He powered down the neutered weapon system. He needed the power. The Shakar ship's sensors picking up that the systems of the Peregrine were beginning to fail one by one, began to move in to pick the once proud bird's bones clean. Booker vented a few pressurized compartments left to the ship to slowly tumble the nose of the Peregrine to the alien ship. Easy, easy. Too fast and they'll catch on. Finally, with one last burst of atmosphere from the starboard cargo bay, the ship was pointed in the correct direction. Mocha pushed the reactor to the point of meltdown and shunted every ounce of power left in the Peregrine systems to the engines. He wouldn't need the power anymore. When the Peregrine hit the Shikar ship, she was moving at three quarters the speed of light. The alien ship could dissipate the energy of the accelerated cannon rounds going that fast but it could never hope to hold against 10,000 ton bullet. From the view screen of his escape pod, Wilkins watched distantly as the crippled peregrine roared to life one last time, her engines burning brighter than they ever had in life, and then she slammed into the enemy ship. The ship's fields fell instantly, and the freighter impacted warship in a muted fireball that for a few moments shone brighter than the system star. Hopelessly outgunned, hilariously outclassed, even in death, Captain Robert Booker would never be 
outmatched. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the Tier 5 members, Marky, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnolds, Oakfield, Lord Azricol, and it's difficult to pronounce. Thank you very much.